Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. I was reading this article from the Daily Hoddle, and upon doing so, I just kept thinking to myself, this is exactly why I'm not selling my XRP. This is exactly why. And it's also a bit of a cautionary story for people that are in the space, are thinking of getting into the crypto space in terms of uh, purchasing a crypto, buying, selling, holding, whatever. Uh, it's worth being aware of this. And it really speaks to the degree to which, you know, markets really move primarily just based on the emotions of retail speculators. It's true of the stock market. It's true, true of the crypto asset class. And it, it's important to recognize this, I personally think, because without understanding how most humans behave and why it results in them getting wrecked, uh, you know, you, you might be more likely to make the same mistakes. Now, uh, to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I am nothing more than an enthusiast in the space. I like talking about XRP and crypto-related topics, and as a result, I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby, but that is all that it is. So what's the story in question? Well, here's the headline, again, from the Daily Hoddle. Barstool's Dave Portnoy says he refuses to scramble like a rat and buy Bitcoin. And I'm going to have to um, censor a fair bit of what he said. He's a, he's a colorful individual, let's say. Nothing against him, I'm just, he's a colorful individual. And I'm going to have to, uh, to, to keep this family friendly, I'm going to have to, you know, kind of censor some of his word choices here. Because I understand there could be some childrenses in the background. They don't need to be hearing that type of jibber-jabber. But let's jump on in. Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy is pledging to stay away from Bitcoin as the apex cryptocurrency continues to exceed expectations. In a new video, Portnoy says that he's standing his ground and staying away from Bitcoin as he believes that it is too late to jump onto the Bitcoin train. Now look, as far as Bitcoin exceeding expectations, uh, I mean, there are some that didn't think that it would get to this level this quickly, but in terms of it hitting this level, this market cycle, I, I, I think that this is within expectations. I mean, out of all the analysts that I follow that I, I personally deem to be respectable, that I've been following for years now, this this is not surprising. This, this is I don't make price predictions, but the fact that this has occurred is not surprising me in the least. And I actually do think it can go a good bit higher from, from where it's at, but uh, I was saying in a video just uh, late yesterday that it's it's my humble opinion, which is the right way to say the word opinion. Why are you guys saying it saying it all weird? It's opinion. It sounds like French or some crap like that. That's how you actually say it. But anyway, it's my humble opinion that uh, the multiplier effect for Bitcoin, I mean, for this market cycle at least, it's nowhere near as great as other large and mid-cap coins. Uh, just my, that's just my perspective, right? But that's uh, so why when you have this idea here of it being too late to jump on the Bitcoin train, it depends on what you believe in, what your time horizon is. If you want to invest something and you are aware of volatility and it's not going to mentally wreck your life if you uh, purchase Bitcoin and it goes down even after the peak of this market cycle and you're just a long-term individual and maybe you want to spend the next few years dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin, well, then yeah, it's probably, this is not financial advice, but for, for me, I would say if that were my, the approach I were taking, that it's not too late. Now, that's not the approach that I'm taking. I do own Bitcoin. But um, I'm more interested, since these market cycles, mind you, they, they take years uh, to complete. And so we won't have another bull rally like this. And it may not be ever like this one ever again, but it will be many years until we have another bull rally like this. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there are so many cryptocurrencies out there that have not, quote unquote, mooned yet. All right. So it just depends on what you're looking for. But here's the first quote from this piece. This is from Dave Portnoy. I'm not giving Bitcoin the satisfaction of jumping in, being the last man on board, being the poorest guy on the ship. Hey, effing poor guy, swab the deck. I'll throw you a little effing Bitcoin. And watch me scramble like a rat for the one, uh, one, hundredth, one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin while Winklevoss and effing parabolic guy and Pomp, who is Anthony Pompliano, laugh at me from the effing upper deck. Uh-uh. <laughs> Is there enough efforts in there? <laughs> could, he, could have peppered a few more in there, right? Anyway, and then he says, I'll just be on a different ship. And I love Parabolic Guy. Parabolic Guy, Jason Williams, is one of my favorite guys. I ain't swabbing his deck. 
<laughs> Look, I can appreciate the mindset because uh, p purchasing Bitcoin at this particular point, if you don't have a long term horizon, uh, if you don't have that long term mindset, yeah, at this point, it's it's basically at its all time high. Kind of risky. Here, I've got uh, Live Coin Watch pulled up. As I record this anyway, who knows what it is by the time you watch it, but uh, right as I record this video, Bitcoin's at $56,533. Very close to its its all time high, and so jumping in at all time highs after tremendous parabolic activity, historically a stupid move with any crypto, like a very stupid move. So this is what uh, the the masses are doing there. The money's flowing in, and then the people that bought in, like uh, you know, like say last March, say you bought in for thirty eight hundred dollars or whatever it was back then, then you, you could sell now for you know, fifty six thousand dollars. That's looking pretty good. But understand that if you're buying in right now, there's somebody that bought for way less that is willing to... I mean, fine, there'll be some people that'll sell the lost panic sign. But I'm just saying, in a general sense, people are taking some serious profits here and just recognizing that there's so much more opportunity. Like, that's why I was saying at the outset of this video, I am not selling my XRP because that is too risky to me. Because the way these market cycles have historically worked is that the money cycles through them. It starts with Bitcoin and then large cap coins, then was in the mid cap coins, then small cap coins. And there are outliers, so it's not a perfect line like that. There are certainly other coins that have, have popped off even during the bear market over the last few years. I mean, hell, Chainlink went arguably parabolic during like summer of last year. And it got up to like $19 before retracing back to whatever the hell it went to, a nine or 10, I don't know, whatever it went to. So there are outliers is my point here. But, uh, you know, as far as XRP, it's so undervalued compared to something like Bitcoin that's already pumped. Whereas XRP, my gosh, just to get back to all time highs, you need what, roughly more or less, uh, I guess a little bit less than in what, an eightfold increase? Am I doing my math right? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. It's close enough. I mean, and that's just to get back to, all, to, the, uh, to the all time high. Now, do you think that XRP would be the only cryptocurrency that... It's going to get to its all-time high, but then not enter price discovery because <laughs> Ethereum got to its all-time high, whatever it was, like fourteen or fifteen hundred. It entered price discovery, and I don't think it's done yet. Um, you know, it, it ended up um, over two thousand dollars. We'll see. But you know, Bitcoin to get back to its all high, all-time high from its low of thirty-two hundred, whatever the hell that its lowest point was in mid-December two thousand eighteen, thirty-three thousand and something, and to get to the all-time high was twenty. But did it stop there? No, it didn't stop there. It's at 56000 freaking dollars right now. So do you think that XRP is only going to get back to its all-time high? And so that's why, to me, I, I, I firmly believe that XRP, along with every other large and mid-cap coin, just like last cycle, is going to go not, not just pump, but go parabolic. And so you can see there are all sorts of large and mid-cap coins that actually have been, you could call it pumping, and they've gone up a lot. But almost none of them have gone parabolic to where it's just like straight rocket ship, nothing but up. That's yet to come. And so for many of these coins that have been pumping, they're still nowhere near even their all-time highs. To me, that's exciting. That's why for, for me, the idea of selling my XRP when it just happens to have not pumped yet, but I know that historically every coin pumps when there's, you know, when there's an alt season, and there is an alt season here, like why the hell would I sell? So I, I just, I'm not telling you to buy or sell or hold. I'm just sharing with you my mindset because I really enjoy talking about this stuff. But uh, moving on with the piece here, this is such a perfect illustration of like, because he, like, again, nothing against Mr. Portnoy here, but, he, and he was right about a lot of like his stance or like not jumping in now, but part of what he's done, it just seems like such, such a stereotypical, unsophisticated, unsophisticated, like retail investor approach. To, like we'll get into it. It's, it's coming up in the piece here. And I don't say that to be offensive, like all credit to him. He's been wildly successful in life. So I'm not like taking anything away from him, but in terms of the way that he treated, uh, you know, Bitcoin potential, maybe not in hindsight to the best move. Now, uh, so the piece continues. Portnoy also worries that he might purchase Bitcoin only to watch it fall in price. Now, that is a warranted concern. At some point, there, I, I personally believe there's going to be a massive retracement. I don't know when, but nothing goes straight up forever. And it could be 30, 40, 50% retracement. And then it could keep going back up. We're like, I don't, even when we do see a, a big retracement, I still don't think that this cycle's done. So you could see Bitcoin, who knows, 70, 80, 100,000, who knows what it'll go to. I'm not pretending no, it's not a prediction. I'm just saying it won't be done. It'll get to something. And then from whatever its top is, if we if it behaves historically the way that it has in the past, then after that high for this market cycle, then you'd see perhaps an 80 or 90% retracement. That would be normal. And I think people not getting into, they're getting into crypto now just have no earthly idea. And so who knows what the low is going to be? Is, 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 is it going to crash down after whatever it gets to, to, I don't know, 50,000 or 40,000? Like, what, what is it going to crash down to? I don't know. I, I really don't know. 
But uh, it, it, what if like what if you buy it now and then you you hold it and it just gets back to like where it is now at the end of the cycle? It's like oh, then you got to wait a few more years to even have another opportunity for it to pump. Anyway, uh, that's why if you have a long term mindset, maybe it doesn't matter. But uh, check out this uh, quote from him. And God forbid if I buy Bitcoin and it crashes, that will force me to hate some people I don't hate, and I don't want to be put in that position. <laughs> I understand what he's saying, but uh, me personally, if I just made a poor decision, I wouldn't. I, I would not hate anybody for that. It's my own. I'm an adult. Uh, but anyway, uh, last year, Portno invested over 1.25 million dollars in Bitcoin and Chainlink after having a quick meeting with the Winklevoss twins. He liquidated his holdings shortly after, booking a loss of twenty thousand dollars. At the time, Bitcoin was trading below twelve thousand dollars. So what happened here? Ultimately, here's what happened. He bought into something he did not understand. And, and even after selling, he acknowledged, he's like, look, I sold because I didn't understand it. Now, the selling portion, getting out after realizing you made a mistake because you purchased something that you didn't understand, I can respect that, actually, very, very genuinely. Um, and just not understanding the, like, the cycles of the space and all that, like, totally get and respect that. But it's such a like a, an unsophisticated retailer type move. It's just he used a larger quantity of money because he's a very wealthy man. $1.25 million, presumably a very small bit of his net worth, but it's a big sum to the average human, no doubt, like a gigantic sum, right? But even so, he 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 acted like the everyday Joe Schmo threw it in, it went down a little bit, what the hell is this? And then uh, and then he sold it at a small loss, and, uh, and all the while, it was, I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm thinking to myself, I was like... That's gonna prove to be a bad move monetarily. I was, that's just my that was my opinion at the time. I was just thinking, uh, th it's gonna be worth substantially more. Bitcoin hasn't even reached its all time high yet. It's barely gotten going here, and it's gonna smash through it. I firmly believe that. Even though even me not being a chart guy and not being willing to make price predictions, I just thought, yeah, a lot higher, whatever that means. And and so here we are, and that ended up proving to be the case here. But, man, I'll tell you what, I can't really fault him for getting out of something that he just doesn't understand. Uh, I mean, that's a scary prospect, investing serious money into something and then not knowing why the hell you just did that. Maybe don't do that, right? <laughs> like, get, get help from a financial pro uh, professional, financial advisor, which I certainly am not. But uh, maybe that would be a good starting point. Do some research, right? And so uh, earlier this week, Portnoy showed his disappointment in a video after learning that Bitcoin breached the $50,000 level. And here's a quote. Bitcoin is the only thing that doesn't go down. Bitcoin's at effing $51,000. It was $11,000 in August. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta love this. And then he continues. I'm never buying Bitcoin. Never, never, never. I don't believe a thing about it, but I do think it's profitable. So again, let me pause right there. He says he doesn't believe a thing about it, and I believe he's telling the truth. But again, like I just cited a moment ago, he also acknowledged he doesn't know a damn thing about it. He doesn't understand it. He hasn't properly researched it. Even when he's been interviewed, uh, he's had discussions with like Anthony Pompliano, who's been trying to explain the long-term viability of Bitcoin, this and that. Um, he just, it wasn't clicking for him. And so, um, you know, and even if, if, if on the flip side, he just doesn't believe on it, even if he did understand it. Well, then, yeah, he still shouldn't invest, duh. You know, like that, that's kind of a no-brainer, too. Uh, but I, I firmly believe the crypto asset class is not going away for so many reasons, um, including my aha moment where I recognize that there are business models that can exist that are better than existing business models. That they can only exist if there are uh, technologically sufficient decentralized cryptocurrencies with an open market price. And then I saw that, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is never going away. Even if I'm betting on the wrong horses, this asset class is never going away. Even if Bitcoin goes to zero and, and disappears, even if XRP goes to zero and disappears, which I'm, it's not what I think is happening. I'm just saying even if the worst happens, asset class is not going away because there's genuine value here, which is different than price. Price is different than value. When we say value, we're talking about actual utility, solving real world problems. And there are things you can do by removing the issue of trust uh, with something that has an open market price. See, it's just you can't do so many things uh, that uh, you know just were pre previously impossible to do. Uh, but anyway, uh, so here's the rest of his quote, though. Um, and this is after he said that he he doesn't understand a thing about it, but thinks it's profitable. I think there's enough steam that it may just continue to go up forever, but I don't buy the underlying like junk behind it. I know it makes money. I know all the bubbly gains behind it. And I know everyone else is bubbly gain-esque. 
Congratulations to them. They are driving Ferraris and buying houses, but that ain't me. But no, not doing it. So there you go. A cautionary tale. Don't jump into something if you don't understand it. Um, this so like FOMOing in and panic selling, and, and it's like he did both of those. He FOMOed in after Bitcoin ran up to twelve thousand dollars, and then it went down a little bit, and he panic sold. <laughs> it's like these. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I get nothing against the guy. Like it's it's just this is these are the behaviors that I've been talking about on this channel. And when he did it, I was talking about it publicly on the channel then too. And it's just worth being aware of this, and that's why for me holding XRP, no. And look, that's why I've been, I've had super strong hands ever since I first bought XRP in November of, uh, of 2017, because look, I haven't sold a single XRP and I, I, I plan to at some point in the future, but the way I look at it is either this thing is going to zero or it's going to go parabolic at some point. And so I don't believe it's going to zero. I could be wrong. I don't believe that though. And so I'm waiting for XRP to have its turn. I don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, historically, it's been one of the, the latest performers, so maybe I'll have to wait a bit during the you know compared to other cryptos during this market cycle. But that's not guaranteed either; it could happen sooner. Even if I have to wait, though, like I, I just don't care because consider this: for for years, XRP before the last market cycle, before it went parabolic and went from twenty something cents to almost four dollars. Mind you, it's like the pumping that happened over a span of oh I don't know what about two and a half weeks, something like that. Maybe it may have been, this is ballpark, and for the purpose of this conversation, doesn't matter. But let's just say it, it went parabolic and the rise happened over 20 days. Well, understand that prior to that, it had mostly been trading sideways for the last like three or four years. I'd have to go back to the chart to get the specifics, but think about that. And yeah, there are these little tiny pops, but in terms of the parab parabolic action, if you wanted the parabolic action, you, you probably did have to wait a good three, four years, whatever it was. And so think about how many days that is. I mean, you're talking about it's 365 days here. So let's say it's three years. You're already over a thousand days. And then only 20 of these days resulted in that type of parabolic price action. And so like it happens over such a short period of time. For me, I'm, I'm betting on that happening at some point. I just don't know when. And so I position myself in such a way that I'm going to have exposure to it whenever it happens. Out of the blue, I don't know what, when it's going to happen. There's, there's no great way to know. But I, I believe that it will because it happens today for every coin because people have are not sufficiently parsing out the differences between cryptocurrencies they're not sufficiently valuing the differences it's just everything goes and that is the hallmark of a very immature asset class that's what it is but it won't stay like this forever i don't know if it'll be the next market cycle finally people are going to start only putting money into things that make sense that you know cryptos that solve problem Problems maybe be another cycle past that. I don't know. It's taking humans a long time to figure this out. And it's and then big part of that is because it's taking a long time for cryptos to gain real world adoption. And until we start to see some real world adoption, it's hard for speculators to get that figured out. And then in addition to that, this isn't the stock market where you trade like nine to five style business hours. This is a global thing. And it's traded 24-7, 365. So it's like there's way more time for people to be speculating and trading, which uh, just, if anything, expedites the the, the uh, how long these cycles take. And then so that coupled with the fact that there's a frenzy around the asset class and there's not much real-world adoption, it's easy to see why why uh, th this asset class is having, uh, having a slow maturation. Like this is not surprising to me in the least. It's very interesting here. And so this is like, to me, going through this article, this is like a fun little case study in primarily what not to do. Now, again, I applaud him for getting out since he didn't understand it. That's dangerous. That that's To me, that would be scary. If I didn't know what the hell I was doing, I felt like I was just actually gambling. No, I would have trouble sleeping at night. But I did educate myself. And even then, I understand all the investing I'm doing. It's highly risky, but I'm willing to uh, take that risk. I want, I want the risk exposure. And I understand that I could lose everything. Uh, but I'm an I'm adult. I'm a big boy here. And I'm investing only what I'm willing to lose on top of that. So again, to me, uh, selling XRP because it's not moving right now is too risky for me. You do what you want. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold. But for me, that would be substantially too risky. And I'm not going to behave like all the useful idiots that FOMO in and panic sell. I'm just going to be patient. I will outpatient anyone else in this market. Because here's how I know that. If I'm wrong, I'm riding this thing to zero. That's how patient I'll be. And I, I firmly mean that. But um, anyway, I will uh, go ahead and uh, wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.